shoot the shoot is definitely an episode. It's balls. It's balls. Now you can hear the new sound effect that I just put on my soundboard. You look disappointed. I look disappointed? I think that's just my face. All righty. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 204. Thank you so much for listening and watching it and that's pretty much it. Those are those are the only senses. The, the pod, this podcast only appeals to the two senses. That well, two of the five senses, um, or the sixth if you uh, if you subscribe to that. But you can only see and hear it. Um, you can't touch it. You can't smell it. That might be a good. That might be a good thing to be honest. But um, and you also can't. Um. Okay, what are the five? How am I forgetting the five? Okay, there's hearing, <laughs> dude. Uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know the five sentence. Uh, five senses. Okay, you hear, you smell, you see, you taste, you feel. You can't taste a podcast either. That's probably a good thing as well, dude. It's been a long year, dude. Um, good way to start the podcast. Me forgetting. One of the five senses. Cheers. Uh, dude, oh my God, I saw fucking TikTok about liquid death. Um, so I was drinking... Uh, dude, what was it? Because I, talk I talked about it once on... On, um, on here, on the podcast... Because it's just really good water. I like it. And I like that it's in a can. It's cool. And it, you can recycle it. And it's pretty cool. Um, but someone tagged me in it in a TikTok. And they're like, or in a tweet or something. They're like, yo, you got you should really talk about liquid death. Or like, well, I could like look into it. And I was like, it's like a lot of people are talking about it on TikTok. And I was like, what the fuck? Is a water brand getting canceled? Is the water I like getting canceled? What did it do, right? Did it tweet some like racist stuff a few years? I don't know if it would do that, right? It's water. Um, did it drown someone? That's fucked up, actually. Uh, if it did that, then I will stop. If Liquid Death did that, I will stop drinking it. Um, but no, did I found a TikTok? I, I I fucking I found it, and the thing, the the critique of Liquid Death. Did I talk about this already? I don't know if I did. Well, the critique of it was it's like bad branding. It's like it's not like not like in like a in terms of marketing, but in like spiritual. Like you're like you're ingesting it. Like you're ingesting death, and it's like a negative thing to put in your body because it's called liquid death. And um, I thought long and hard about that. And what I got to say to that is um, because it's water, you know, it's really not that deep. Um, well, it can be if it's a lot of water in like a big pool, then it can be then it can be pretty deep. But um, it's just a can, just a can of water, you know. That's so. I mean, sure, if it's do people, you can do what you want. You could consume or not consume things for whatever reason uh, you want. But also at the same time, so there's also that to consider. Um, but yeah, dude, this is episode 204. This will be coming out next week. Um, so if any of these things are a little not topical anymore or something, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know. Okay. I'm uh I'm recording these in bulk today because uh Am I recording? Yes, okay. I'm recording these in bulk because uh I'm, uh, it's Christmas, man. I want to fucking relax, okay? I want to take some weeks off, spend some time with the family and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm fucking, uh, I'm, re I'm recording like three episodes today, two main episodes and one bonus, okay? So, what? So, what? What are you gonna, what? What do you got? What? Sue me, okay? Don't do that. That'd be a crazy court case, though. Your Honor, Kurt has done something. He filmed three podcasts in a day, and that's not chill. Um, 
Overruled. That's not enough. The judge is a fan. Plot twist. God, man, my dandruff is so bad this time of year. It's actually fucked. I hate it, dude. My scalp is like, it's like there's, oh, God, it sucks. It's like it's a fucking, like, like a, you know, you know those driveways that some people have that are just rocks? That's what my fucking head feels like, man. Just fucking <sighs> sucks, dude. Also, which sucks, I'm pretty sure I have dandruff, but I have dandruff because of the psoriasis I have on my scalp, which is awesome. Why do illnesses and diseases and stuff, why do they have the ugliest fucking names, you know? Psoriasis, eczema, you know? Skin conditions, like, they sound like, they actually fucking nailed it. I actually fucking nailed it with eczema. For so long, I would call it eczema, and no one ever corrected me until like fucking five years ago. And they're like, hey, what are you saying? It's not called that. What? It's eggs. It's, it's, it's eczema. And my friend Jacob had brain conquer. Says it's, I say illness is wrong. Um, dude, uh, what have I fucking done lately, man? I've just been fucking... Well, by the time this podcast is up, my Christmas video will be out. Um, so I hope you fucking liked it. I hope you watched it and enjoyed it. I spent a long time on it. Uh, like t- like weeks, and I didn't intend to. Like I thought it was going to be quick. I thought it was going to be quick and easy, but it really turned into something that it, um, that I don't know. I just hope it's enjoyable. It's a little, I don't know. I just hope you like it. I fucking know. Um, I'm fully prepared for it to flop, and I don't care. Okay, fuck it. I'm done. I'm anyway. As long as I'm proud of it, right? That's the. That's the uh, the goal, you know. Um, what else have I been fucking doing, man? Dude, I saw the 1975 in concert, man, at the uh, at the Scotiabank Arena. I think it was like the biggest show on their tour. It was fucking sick, dude. Um, it was our, I think, seventh time seeing the 1975. Um, man, like I. I I've seen them seven times now, and that was the best they've ever been, for sure. Um, they've always put on amazing shows, but this one in particular was, like, insane. Like, the production was incredible. The stage design and, like, the entire show was... Fe- it felt, like, really cohesive and, like, I don't know, really... um, I don't know what the word for it is, but... not. I guess, like, experimental, you could say, but it was still, like... I was fucking hammered, but even, like... So I think some of it was lost on me. If I was sober, I probably could have had a more um, articulate interpretation. Um, but no, it was fun. I was fucking dancing and grooving. They played uh, chocolate, which is nice. They don't always do that anymore. They played sex. Kind of bummed because they played Paris instead of Change of Heart. I do love Paris, but Change of Heart is a little better than Paris. Only slightly, but you know, I still love Paris. That's a fucking great song. Um but no, it was fucking awesome, dude. I met a bunch of people down there too, because I, I finna be in the pit, and um, yeah, I met a bunch of cool people that said what up, that liked my videos and shit. It was awesome. Um, yeah, I fucking cried, dude. Like, whoa, cried a lot. Cried like fucking crazy. Um, but no, I think I was at like a comfortable level, drunk which was what I wanted to be because the last time I saw 1975, it was right before COVID. And dude, I was fucking blackout. Like I was so fucking drunk. Like I was fucked up. And I'm not trying to be like, dude, I got so fucked up. The other night it was so cool. I'm not even trying, like not at all. It's like, it was like sad because I, <laughs> I got like so hammered. I knocked over someone's drink and she like tweeted about it and shit. It was, fu- I don't know. It was, I got, it was embarrassing, but, so this one I was like, I don't want to, and I barely even remember it, so I was like, I gotta, like, be level-headed, so I remember, like, 90% of the concert, so, that I just went to, so, and, and it was great, it was fucking awesome, so if you ever get to see them, go.
Um, cause wow, fucking crushed it again. Um, just so good live, man. I wish I didn't. I'm, and I don't, I really don't go in there thinking I'm going to cry either, but then I hear like certain notes, or certain songs and it's like, oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, it was fucking, uh, it was awesome, man. The Toronto show was fucking sick. Um, they played about you, dude, and the fu- and and fucking Carly, the girl who sings in the song. She came out on stage for her like debut and sang. Oh, dude, it was fucking crazy. Such a good show, great fun. Went to a bar after, and we did picklebacks, dude. Love that shit. Um, they should be, that should be like the standard everywhere. So if you do shots, they should just also bring a shot of pickle juice with it, you know? Cause that fucking saves that. I did. I felt fine the next day, which is crazy. I think it's the pickle juice. I think it saved my life. Um, but yeah, that show was fucking awesome. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also saw, all right. Movie review time. Here we go. Bow, 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 bow. It's time for the movie. A review. Okay, that's the best one I could do a cappella. Um, I saw Avatar 2, The Way of Water, okay? I went with my cousin, Joseph, because he's a big fan of Avatar, and we had just watched um, the original one like the week before. So I was like, sure, let's fucking do it. Let's go see the movie. Um, you know, expectations weren't that high, I'll be honest, because like I saw, I watched Avatar, and I was like, okay. Um, I actually did a review on on Letterboxd. <laughs> uh, gave it a three out of five. The original Avatar. Um, it would have got a four, but yo, the uh, the fucking thing. So Avatar, the movie, the movie Avatar. They travel to Pandora, this planet, to and they like start tearing down a bunch of shit and, like, mining and stuff. Um, Because they're trying to kill the Ender Dragon. Um, No, uh, it's Minecraft. Um, They mine down... Okay, okay, they go to Pandora for this material. Material, material girl... Okay, can I tell a story? Okay, they go to Pandora. And the whole reason they go to this, like, foreign planet filled with the Na'vi people... Um, is for a resource, a valuable resource, and it's called unob. It's called unobtainium. <sighs> Dude, it's called unobtainium. Uh? Yo, I forgot about that. And he said that, and I went, <laughs> out loud. I went, oh, because that's, you had all the money in the world to make that movie and rearrange things in the script. You could have, you just could have thought, you could have came up with anything. You could have called it fucking eczema, and I would have been better, okay? But no, you got to call it unob- unobtainium. Stupid, but it's all good. So I was like, Avatar 2 is probably going to be, you know, probably the same level, right? Um, and I was like, sure. The whole th- One of the main draws of Avatar, I'm not going to spoil the movie, by the way, but the whole draw of Avatar, like the whole like positive thing, like the reason people watch it is that it looks pretty, right? And the CGI is like groundbreaking and, you know, it like changes... It's just like, you know, it's really pretty, right? So that's what I expected. But like since the first Avatar, CGI has like improved like crazy, right? Um, But yo, let me tell you, dude, I was not expecting it to look that good. Like it was fucked. Like that is probably the most beautiful movie I've ever seen in my life. And it was like all CG, which is crazy. Like it was gorgeous. And also that was such a a tough, that's such a crazy decision to do a water based movie too. Cause like if you animating water in like 
CG. It's so hard to do. You have to like simulate like a ton of different things. It takes a million years to render it and stuff. Like it's bold. Definitely bold for them to do that. But it was great. It got to a point where it was like, I think after like a half hour, I was I like stopped being impressed by it because it looked so real. So I like stopped at that point. I was like in my brain, I was like, oh yeah, this is real. These are real people. It's not. It's not a screen. It's not motion capture. This actually. This all actually happened. I'm just watching it. That's how real it was. Like it was the opposite of the uncanny valley. You know, like it went so real that it went the opposite way. Where I was like, this is real now. There is no CG. What do you mean? Best CGI? How did it win that award? It's real. There wasn't any in it. You know. Um, but yo, dude, I watched the movie. Okay. I was nervous that the movie was going to be like in 3D because I fucking hate. 3d movies so much um i've never liked them even when they were back in the day when they were like blue and red um i especially hated them then like because like that was just fucking uh, okay now the movie's blue and red now great and it kind of moves and and some and some kid is like whoa you almost got hit in the face with the cupcake or whatever the fuck it was you know and they like reach into the camera um i hated that shit man and dude, whenever <laughs> yo, whenever they showed like um commercials for like 3D movies, <laughs> they would always have that one shot where it, like someone reaching out in the audience and the audience going, oh, and like <laughs> like backing up being scared. Never. That has never happened in a 3D movie. Um 3D's nuts. How about that? So I asked my cousin if it was 3D and he said no. So I was like, fuck yeah. But it had like another little logo on it that I've never seen before. But I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe it's like some fucking 4K, like 4 million, 8 million K or whatever. Um, so I was like, or like some sound bullshit. So I was like, fine. And then we get to the theater, we get in our seats, you know, everything plays. It's movie time. Before the movie starts, it's like, introduce, you are in a, sp- <laughs> it was like, you are in a special uh, new type of theater. Experience film. Like you've never experienced it before. And I was like, damn, this looks awesome. And then the screen like went on the th- on the side walls of the theater. Like there's the one screen at the front, right? On the one side of the wall. But then there's the two walls and also had some parts of the screen like projected onto it. So like extend it. And it was like become fully immersed in the movie feel like you're actually there because you can see a little bit more and it was like i was like okay that's kind of cool and then the movie started and i was like right off the bat i was like oh this sucks because now i gotta be like uh should i be looking over here too like on the left and the right or should i just be fucking looking forward so that was weird i wish i would have just watched it regularly also Guy beside me had a cough and um, he was doing that thing where you don't cover your mouth and he was a teenage teenage boy. Teenage boy sitting beside me. Hot dude. He had hot dogs. Don't get anything other than popcorn at a movie theater. You know what I mean? He had hot dogs, plural, two of them. He had two hot dogs for a movie. Bro, I don't care if you even eat all day. You're having popcorn. You're at the movies, man. Don't get fucking hot. Th- don't get a meal. What? What are, you do- what are you doing, man? Get a hot dog if you're at a baseball game, okay? So he was coughing all over his fucking, all over his wieners. It was just fucking, <coughs> and then sometimes... He would like hold it in, you know? You know when you do that? When it's like, you know that noise when you try to hold in a cough? He was doing that right beside me. And at, like at some point, at one point I want to be like, hey, shut up. But I didn't want to be that guy. And also the guy in front of me, man, movies suck. <laughs> the guy in front of me, I was just sitting with my legs, you know, just, just there sitting normally. And... Every like two minutes, he would lean back and hit my legs, and I, and he'd like look behind and be like, oh, and then and then put his seat back up, and then keep. You don't have to have your seat back, man. Watch the. Mo- 
I'm convinced I'm the only person in the world who knows how to do stuff correctly. Okay? I think that's true. Even when I'm driving. When I'm driving, when I'm on an airplane, when I'm in the movie theater, no one else knows how to fucking do anything. People fucking merging without their signals, you know? People in air people on airplanes standing up in the back row as soon as the plane fucking parks wait not your turn yet man that's not how shit works you'll get off the plane just wait you know and in the movie you sit down you don't lean back you sit down with popcorn and a pop and you watch the movie you go oh that was good and you leave okay don't go oh god sorry these hot dogs (laughs) oh Oh, sorry, b- bumped your leg there. Sorry, man. Um, but yeah, the movie was pretty good. There was some stuff that I wasn't too stoked on, but it was very pretty. Um, but one thing that remains true from the first Avatar film is James Cameron still wants to fuck the Navi people. He is so horny. He is so down bad. For the people of Pan, for for the native people of Pandora, dude. This dude sexualizes them like pretty heavily. I feel like in both films. I don't know if I'm just. I feel like I, I other people's got to be picking up on that, right? Um. So I actually saw TikTok as well, uh, uh, going through one, uh, part of the script in the original Avatar, from the original Avatar movie. And there has been a lot of critique on the Avatar films and this new one about how, you know, he's, James Cameron is fetishizing, um, like, indigenous people, um, which is valid, you know. I um, I can't really speak, you know. I, I, I understand that for sure. It seems a little, a little weird, but um, let me read you this little excerpt. Excerpt? Excerpt, 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 excerpt. Let me read you this eczema from uh, the first uh, Avatar script, okay? This is when um, Jake Sully is, like, rescued by um, uh, Neytiri. So, down angle as Jake passes under a tree limb. Invisible to him, draped on the limb like a leopard, is a striking Navi girl. She watches, only her eyes moving. She is lithe as a cat, with a long neck, muscular shoulders, and nubile nubile breasts. Am I saying that right? Nubile? Nubile. Nubile. Okay, and nubile breasts. What does that mean? Young and sexually attractive. Oh. Okay. How young, you ask? Let me tell you. And she is devastatingly beautiful for a girl with a tail. In human age, she would be 18. Would she? <laughs> Oh, God. Would she? Hold on. Do I have the fucking... uh... Okay, let me read that one more time. In human age, she would be 18. That whole sentence, man. She is lithe as a cat. With a long neck, muscular shoulders, and nubile breasts. She is devastatingly beautiful for a girl with a tail. In human age, she would be 18. Her name is Neytiri. Um, yeah, man. That's crazy, because when I watched Avatar, I thought Neytiri was like, I don't know, 30? Like, same age as Jake? Who's like an adult man? But James Cameron was like, yeah, in human years, she'd be 18. She literally just turned 18. Um, Yeah, weird as fuck, man. 
And I felt it. I felt that uh I felt that persist through the um through the film. Um also, dude. I'm surprised like <laughs> oh, man. I'm picturing like James Cameron because you know how my theater theaters are always trying to fucking like find new ways to immerse you. You know, like there's the fucking 3D, 4D, fucking AVXY, uh, uh, fucking you know, X HD W V, fucking you know, all these fucking new things for like to immerse you and make movies better. But it's like you don't have to. Just fucking play a movie for me and I'll watch it, you know? But, you know, the three screens and shit. But James Cameron, dude, if if he was in charge of that shit, yikes. There'd be fucking booby... (laughs) Fucking x-ray glasses you put on for the movie to see the the Navi's tits, you know? See Neytiri's boob... Who Neytiri's blue boobs? Neytiri's bloobs, you know? Ins- <laughs> it's like um you know how like um when there's 3D movies 3D as in triple D triple D boobs you know tr- 3D you know in 3D movies when it's like put on 3D glasses now in the James Cameron Avatar screening uh like fully immersive screening it'd be like all right st- st- <laughs> stick st- shove your cock into the into the uh, blue fleshlight that's attached to the back of the seat in front of you. <laughs> Get that's crazy. <laughs> All right, G- commence cock sucking now. The whole theater's just like, oh wow, oh, wow, I love this movie. <laughs> No blue balls here, dude. <laughs> dude. The whole theater walking out, theater full of dudes being like, oh, that's us. That was a good movie. I want to go to bed. <laughs> dude, literally, if, James, if it was up to James Cameron, that's what the theater would be like, dude. Just getting your absolute soul sucked by watching The Way of Water. Um, But no, the movie's all right. James Cameron is a little weird, man. Um, dude, all right, let's uh, change the subject a little. We're going to stay on topic, but kind of on topic, but we're going to change the subject. And if that made any fucking sense, we're going to stay on topic, but we're going to change the subject. Okay, man. Those are two different opposite things. All right. Um, actually... Okay, well, yeah, hold on. Okay, so, big news, all right? Big news, folks. Big news in the Neil breen averse, the Neil Breen, the, the NBCU, the Neil Breen Cinematic Universe, big news, okay? He finally announced his new movie, okay? The new movie that's supposed to come out uh, next year. He's been tweeting about it for a while, Um. I actually talked about this in detail in the, on one of my bonus episodes, but I actually talked to Neil Breen about funding this movie. I wanted to give him a lot of money to help make this movie the best it could be. I was prepared to give him a lot, but he um, he was not re- he didn't want to. He wanted to work with experienced film investors, and I wasn't that. So, um, so I'm so I thought you know we'd watch and react to the trailer and his announcement video on the podcast, and we'll give our initial thoughts, okay? Um, this is like a slowly turning into like a movie review podcast. This is like kind of crazy. Um, this is about to die, so I'm going to turn it back on, and then we'll get to it. <clears throat> okay, let's, uh, let's friggin' take a peek at this shit, shall we? All right, let's watch. God, ow. Let's watch the. Um, he did an update video. Fuck. 
Hold on. Let me. Okay. Yeah. He did like an update video on his uh, on his movie. So let's uh, on, and he uploaded on his YouTube channel. So let's see how it looks. Hi, this is Neil Breen. I want to give you a new update on my feature film. The name of the feature is Cade, the Tortured Crossing. Okay. It's a full length feature, 136 minutes long. Damn, let's go. I completed the film in September of 2022. I then proceeded to submit it to indie uh, film festivals all around the world that I thought would be interested. I won't hear back. Bro, if he gets to like premiere this shit at Sundance or TIFF, that would be fucking awesome. I want to go so bad. I've never been to a Neil Breen premiere. I would love to go to one. I'll fucking fly to one. I don't care. I do not care. from those festivals as far as selection goes probably until February or March of 2023 alright therefore because it's one of their requirements the film cannot be screened or sold commercially prior to the film festival no dude we gotta wait so long we gotta wait fucking we gotta wait till fucking Q2 Cringe. That I'm selected for. So the film is not for sale on DVD, Blu-ray. It's not available on any platform, not Amazon, not YouTube, not iTunes, etc., etc. And it's not... Bro, Neil, buddy, the audio on this? Wild. <laughs> that room tone is loud. Available for screenings. Yet, I will let you know that AC is blaring. I'm pretty sure he lives in like Nevada, so that explains it. The moment the film becomes available for sale on any of those platforms. <clears throat> okay, I do it. I I appreciate the one take, but like you could you could cut that out. You can cut that part out. <laughs> Did I sit next to Neil Breen at the fucking movie? At Avatar? I've also... Dude, I would love to go see Avatar 2 with Neil Breen. Dude, could you imagine? That'd be awesome. Halfway through, he'd probably be like, my shit looks fucking better than that. <laughs> Activated live right now. The website for the film. Dude, I just... Uh, dude, there's something so fascinating about this man. Like, he... um, Just no text on the screen with the link to his website. It's not in the description either. All it says is Cade the Tortured Crossing. Update. No link. No link to it. He just says it, spells it out on the on on his uh on his YouTube video. You got to figure it out. Oh fuck, dude! I left a comment a day ago. No likes. Can't wait to purchase and watch a new film, Neil. Okay, guys, if you're watching this shit, if you watch this podcast, go to this video on Neil Breen's channel and up and give my comment a like. Okay, and and reply and be like, same. The film's address. Is www. Cade C A D E dash crossing C R O S S I N G dot com. On the website, you'll see the poster for the film. Dude, you will I can't see wait. the trailer for the film, which I'm very Let's, excited about. And you'll begin know. to get a feel for the scope and scale of it and how different it is from prior films of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and how bigger and better it is than prior films of mine. Okay, so uh, rem- okay, so he said it's it's different, right? It's um, he said it's different from prior films of his, right? Okay, remember that when we watch the trailer. Um, let's check out the website, dude. 
like biggest picture ever. Um, I have to scroll to see the whole thing. Dude, I could have had a credit on this thing. Uh, Neil, why wouldn't you take my money? I wanted to help. Okay. K, the torture crossing, a Neil Breen film. An identical AI. Okay, so this is, I guess, after Twisted Pair. This follows uh, Cade. Um, so this is a sequel, his first sequel, I guess. An identical AI twin brother. <laughs> an identical AI twin brother restores an old, mysterious mental asylum. He takes it upon himself to mystically train the patients as warriors for humanity and justice. Damn, that's a wild plot, dude. All right, where's the trailer? All right, let's check this shit out. It's a four-minute trailer. Wow, okay. Okay, I have... I'll say this. I have watched this already. I couldn't wait. Sorry, this came out a few days ago, and I literally was, like, foaming at the mouth. I couldn't wait to to, to watch it, so... Um, but, yeah, let's... Let's give it a go. Like, such a long intro to the, for the trailer, you know? I think together we can make a success of this project. They are our heroes <laughs> I we Good. will never let them down so right off the bat he was like I think you'll tell from this trailer that it's a lot different from my other movies but it's like already crazy amount of green screen I love it too because it's like that is such a, like a set that you could just find anywhere stairs a house, but it's like, nah, fuck it. We're going all CG. We're going all, all green screen, dude. I love it. This youth trafficking is disgusting. We had two more last Damn. night. Yo, okay, I will say he's getting better. He's his his CGI has improved. Like his green screen like compositing, I like I guess is that the word is that the word? Like it's you could it looks a little more real, which is great, you know. Like, that looks... Yeah, he's got... What the hell's going on here? Like, I honestly can't tell if that's... Yeah, I think it's... It might be a real... I don't even know, dude. We're trying. We're (laughs) trying. So, if you can't... If you're just listening to this, he's in, like, a completely abandoned mental asylum. There's people just, like, on the ground dying... And there's this doctor who's like, we're trying our best. We're trying. <laughs> I don't know if you are. Yeah, you tell That's him, That's okay? not good enough. Let go! Ah! Help! I'm not quite... I'm not quite sure what the plot is yet. I know I just read the synopsis, but I still am not sure what the plot is. Uh, 
I want to see where my money's been going. Okay, so that but one looks not look as good as the other ones, but I mean, still gonna outsell Avatar too, man. Still gonna do better than that shit. Megan, what do you know about the patient trafficking that's going on here? <laughs> what do you know about the gene editing research? I think she does. You must know something. Yo, he's back. There's been a huge increase in the amount of kidnapping of the youths and runaways that are being used for medical testing. Uh, we'd like you to keep a lookout for any irregularities that might happen at your lab. We can. Is he in hell? Is he going to hell in this movie? His eye changed color. Okay, yeah, dude. This scene is fucking incredible. Okay, if you were listening, the last half of this trailer is the best shit I've ever fucking seen in my life, okay? If you were just listening to this, please turn it off, go to YouTube, and pull up this part of the podcast, okay? Because you will not regret it, okay? <laughs> We've taken in six new patients look this week. Sick as fuck. We've lost two. We can't afford to lose any. Patients are money. Wherever there's an injustice, I will be there. See a wherever there's a fight. He's a judge now too. We will be there. I will never forget. Come on, show the fucking scene. Okay, we're almost done. Looks looks great. Beautiful. Okay, I think it's after this. They are coming for you, my <laughs> warriors. Okay, here we go. This is what I've been preparing you for. Yo, dude, it's like, there's so many people, dude. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, like 15 people fighting all at once. And you can't, like, that's a, he's heard people's criticisms. You know, like in Morbius, they were saying like, you can't, I can't even tell what's going on with all these fight scenes. He's like, all right, fuck it. I'll show you everything. I'll show you all the fight scenes all at once. All right. Dude. Incredible. Fucking 10 out of 10. I cannot wait to see the whole thing. Um, wow. Okay. How about we, uh, how about we wrap this up? I was going to do some advice, but, um, we're already at fucking 40 something, dude. That's crazy. Um, so how about I do that on the next episode? We'll do like an, we'll like, we'll do an advice big one. Cause I got a lot to go through. So, um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, press the like button, you know, subscribe, comment, all that bullshit, you know, do what you got to do. And, um, yeah, check out the Patreon for bonus episodes. And that's about it, dude. Thanks for listening. Uh, have a good week. Happy holidays, all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, peace out. See ya.